The mystery of dark matter is one of the most exciting unsolved problems in cosmology and astrophysics. Astronomers believe that almost one-fourth of the observable universe is composed of dark matter. Estimates also suggest that perhaps 85% of the matter present in galaxies is in the form of dark matter. According to our current models, dark matter halos are the basic units of cosmological structures. As a result, they play a crucial role in the formation and evolution of galaxies, protecting them from the gravitational influence of their neighbors. Without them, it is almost impossible for the galaxies to form in the first place. But astronomers have noted something strange in a galaxy cluster 62 million light years away. The recent dark matter studies could pave the way for entirely new physics. So what's so special about the galaxies in this distant cluster? How do these galaxies challenge our current cosmological models? Finally, and most importantly, how can this discovery change the course of cosmology and astrophysics? Dark matter is a hypothetical form of matter believed to be present almost everywhere in the known universe. Unlike normal matter, dark matter does not interact with electromagnetic force. Hence, it does not absorb, reflect, or emit light, making it extremely hard to spot. This is the reason why it's been named dark. Nevertheless, astronomers have assumed its existence because without it, the motion of stars and the dynamics of galaxies would not make sense. Furthermore, as per different theories, the majority of dark matter is thought to be non-baryonic. This means that it is not composed of subatomic particles in the standard model of physics. Instead, these unknown particles can be some weakly interacting massive particles or gravitationally interacting massive particles. Other potential candidates include dim brown dwarfs, white dwarfs, and neutron stars. Although even the most sensitive detectors have failed to find convincing evidence to prove the existence of dark matter, its gravitational influence on surrounding visible matter clearly says that something mysterious like dark matter exists. The problem lies in the dark matter halos. A dark matter halo contains clumps of dark matter bound together by gravity. As a result, they exert a strong gravitational pull on galaxies in their vicinity. But if we can't see these halos, how do we know they interact with the galaxies? To understand this, let's consider a simple example. When an object exerts gravitational pull differently on different parts of another body, it can distort its natural shape, leading to tides. It's similar to tides on Earth due to the Moon's gravitational pull. The Moon pulls more firmly on the side of Earth that faces it. The universe is thought to contain trillions of dwarf galaxies. They are the smallest and most common galaxies in the universe. Dwarf galaxies are faint and are usually found riding along in massive galaxy clusters or near much larger companions. This makes these small galaxies vulnerable to gravitational distortions by their giant neighbors. But their dark matter halos come to the rescue. They partly shield the dwarfs from tides raised by the massive clusters, thereby restricting their distortion. All galaxies are believed to reside at the center of an enormous bubble of dark matter, and dwarf galaxies are expected to contain even greater proportions of dark matter than large spirals. As the motions of their stars cannot be fully explained by the sum of their stellar mass alone. One example is Tucana 2, a dwarf galaxy near the Milky Way composed of old stars. It does not experience any current star formation and has a massive dark matter halo. But things are pretty different in the case of the Fornax cluster lying 62 million light years away. 
it contains several distorted and perturbed dwarf galaxies. According to the standard model of cosmology, if dark matter halos surround these dwarfs, such distortions should not exist. In their paper, the researchers analyzed the data obtained from the Fornax Deep Survey, or the FDS. It's the most recent survey of the Fornax cluster and contains data about 564 galaxies. First, the researchers removed the galaxies that they believed were not part of the cluster, but represented a line of sight contamination. They also removed the galaxies with an unclear tidal morphology because they were not helpful for the analysis. Finally, they were left with 353 dwarf galaxies from the Fornax survey. To have a thorough insight into the odd features displayed by Fornax dwarfs, researchers tried to understand the extent of these galaxies' gravitational distortions and what causes them. The distortion in every galaxy depends upon several factors including their internal properties and distance to the cluster center, where gravitational forces are much stronger. So galaxies with large sizes but few stars and those lying closer to the cluster's core get easily disturbed. Researchers compared what they saw in the cluster with the observations made by the VLT Survey Telescope at the European Southern Observatory. And what they found seems to point to some problems with the standard model. First of all, according to the standard model, the dark matter halos of these dwarves should partly shield them from the tides raised by the cluster. Instead, however, they are distorted and completely unshielded. The galaxies in the paper were divided into four main categories. Undisturbed, mildly disturbed, very disturbed, and unclear. In addition, the researchers provided images of three survey dwarfs presenting different levels of disturbance in various color bands and filters. This is the image of an undisturbed galaxy. Nothing seems wrong here, but this galaxy in the mildly disturbed category shows signs of tidal distortions. Finally, this is the image of one of the galaxies in the very disturbed category. One can notice signs of tidal perturbations due to the gravitational influence of neighboring galaxies. Suppose the observations have to be explained by the standard model. In that case, the Fornax dwarves should already get destroyed by gravity from the cluster center, even when the tides they experience are 64 times weaker than their self-gravity. This contradicts previous studies in which it was found that the force needed to disturb a dwarf galaxy is about the same as its self-gravity. So, if what the astronomers found is confirmed, then the standard model of cosmology needs some serious revisions. But do we have any other model to justify the strange behavior of the Fornax dwarf galaxies? There's at least one alternative explanation for the peculiar galaxy shapes. The modified Newtonian dynamics model also called MOND. This model suggests that Newton's law of universal gravitation should be modified to account for the observed properties of galaxies, and then it could be applied to explain the absurd galactic appearances. MOND was first proposed in 1983 by Israeli physicist Mordechai Milgram. The original aim of the hypothesis was to explain why the velocities of stars and galaxies were observed to be larger than expected based on Newtonian mechanics. So it is an alternative to the dark matter hypothesis in explaining why galaxies do not appear to obey the currently understood laws of physics. While MOND appears to be perfect at explaining the dynamics of spiral galaxies, it isn't flawless or an ideal alternative to the Lambda CDM model. For example, MOND fails to explain the masses of galaxy clusters by a factor of 2 to 3. In addition, it doesn't explain the observations of the bullet cluster lying 3.7 billion light years away. It will be interesting to see which of these two models emerges as the ultimate winner. If researchers keep finding more galaxies lacking dark matter halos, we might have to reconsider our current standard model of cosmology. It's an exciting time for astronomy, 
because even the James Webb Space Telescope has found some galaxy candidates that should not exist as per our galaxy evolution models. And one of them is the Schrodinger's Galaxy Candidate that we discussed in the 20th episode of the series. With Webb working at full capacity, astronomers hope to find dozens of high redshift candidates and study their composition in detail. This concludes the 22nd episode of the Sunday Discovery series. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon so that you don't miss future episodes of this series.